and welcome back everyone that's right we got ourselves another cast we're being joined by uh, oh, yours truly yuntao but with a special occasion good old thrax coming up in here from the mw leagues comp discord hey thrax how you doing hey hey uh so we got a dual stream cast here today uh mw mm -hmm. leagues 2 and young tao's personal channel you're also streaming right yep i sure am we just started oh <gasps> excitement so we got two angles here for everyone who wants to try and like dissect this entire match uh, yeah be i one. will assume that the rex is going to have way smoother camera movement so if you're you know you get a little sick feeling by watching my stream just go check out their their stuff i promise we will give you a great experience combined our efforts combined we are the power rangers is that too old of a reference that might that fits with this community that's fine yeah yeah but yeah the rex you excited i'm excited i am um you know the second second match of, of casting here i did uh young tau's 2d20 team earlier on this channel and okay. now i'm doing uh 2d20 second team back-to-back -back casts here just a little break in between and i'm pulling in young tau now that he's not playing he's coming in and joining me on the uh the cast here so um busy day for young tau yeah, this will be my third cast today, beyond my wow. match, beyond working way too many hours for uh, for my job. But hey, I'm here for it. And honestly, Thorax, I don't think, I can't remember the last time we've casted or done anything together. So Never. that alone, I'm excited for. I don't think we've ever done a cast together. So. Have we not? Oh my gosh. Yeah. Here we go. Let's go. Come on. I think that deserves five gifted subs for MW Leagues, if not the Untow stream, just for celebration. But maybe that's too much plugging. Uh, Thorax, I am well. I am super excited to do this with you. Uh, we've already kind of talked about what we're going to focus on. Thorax is obviously a genius, a legend amongst everybody, and is going to help me out with all the technical cast because you know I I, I just get a little excited. I want to focus on the drama, the excitement. We can't be in the pilot seat, so I'm going to do my best to make you feel like you're in the pilot seat. But Thorax, me and you, we got this. Uh, obviously, I have a little skin in the game, as they say, yep. because yes, two D twenty nuisance value is a team that is birthed from normal 2d20 uh, a lot of people know that 2d20 likes to get people involved in comp and as long as you have a no toxic kind of attitude and you're willing to learn and work with the team we can make things happen and so you'll notice when this team jumps in it's not just 2d20 members but also uh team members from oop and bulge so uh it's gonna be some good times i'm uh, really really looking forward to it they've been putting in a lot of work a lot of scrims and a lot of internals to get to this point and i think this will be a good match for them yeah, so I guess uh, Industry Coalition Season 6, you know, everybody knows the format. Let's go over the division here. Division F is the division that we're looking at today. Um, 2D20, if I understand correctly, they're playing for second place today. Uh, if I understand that what the tiebreakers is... are. Yeah. So NAF has won the division as I understand things. They're playing Correct. as well, um, but they don't even need a win. They've already, they're doing a victory lap right now. Um, 2D20 Nuisance Value has two points. They're tied with FJRD Hyperion Rocket Raiders, which also has two points. However, 2D20 Nuisance Value won the head-to-head -head between those two teams. So mm -hmm. if I understand tiebreakers correctly, um, as long as they're ahead on points and they won the head-to-head, -head, they have the tiebreaker from my understanding of the tiebreaker. So they will have second place 2D20 if they win here today. If they don't that is, win, that then it'll be too. kind of dependent on... Actually, no, hold on. Hyperion Rocket Raiders, they have a bye this week, so 2D20 should have second place already in the bag, regardless of the outcome, if I understand tiebreakers. Um, you say, I'm not 100% sure if, like, because doesn't it count as five drops one for a bye? He... They don't get any points for it, though, do they? Actually, they get uh, full points, they... don't they? I think they do. I think yeah. that's how the buys work. So, I don't know. I think 2D20 is definitely trying to secure third place i unless they 5-0 which yeah that oh, wouldn't matter right yeah 20 had a had a buy as well so they would get full points for that as well currently it's not counting that so oh, i don't look at this. think that's counting as a match i think they should have second place already and whether they win or lose but i'm not 100 on the tiebreakers i'm gonna point that out again um but yeah they're yeah, playing we'll here have to today figure this out chat let us know tell us tell yeah. us the actual answers we're not referees we're, we don't pretend to be admins we're oh. just good old casters trying to point and be like hey look what that person's doing and hopefully make it more entertaining than that so yeah yeah uh i think my lobby <laughs> settings are good uh 50 minutes first person only conquest and a yar looks good yeah. all right on hrt thanks cat girl sorry i forgot your unit my bad 
Um, All right. <clears throat> Rex, have you always been this good looking? No, uh, I had to do a little bit of work, uh, plastic surgery, whatnot. Wow, this guy's so humble. He's lying to us like through his teeth. I already feel it in my heart. But you know what? I appreciate that. Thank you for humanizing yourself a bit. I appreciate that a lot. Um, so yeah, we're excited for this game. Um, I, as we were just kind of point out, uh, we, we were talking about 2D20 a lot. We're gonna, I'm gonna try my best not to be super biased. It's not probably not gonna work, but I'm gonna try uh -huh. my best. Bacon Pirates, however, is currently fourth place. If they win this drop and dunk on Nuisance Value, I think they can take third. So, and like, it's not like that Bacon Pirates has a try. Like their first match, they 5 0 Their second match, they lost, but it was a 2-3 loss. So a very close loss. Uh, third match, they had their bye. Fourth match, they did get beat up by Nap, but Nap has been beating up on everybody. Yep. They still got a drop off of them. So, you know, like these matches, like towards the end of the season, the things you got to think about from a comp perspective is that, yes, teams are getting a little burnt out. And yes, teams, like especially new comp teams like uh, Nuisance Value, they can suffer a little bit in that process. Um, but it, it's, it is impressive when teams do get to that final week and do keep playing. And I think that sometimes people sleep on them a little bit and they just go rehash old strats. So I'm kind of hoping that Bacon Pirates keeps us fresh because I'm pretty sure 2D20 Nuisance Value is going to do their best to do something a little different. We don't actually share our strats either. So I'll be very surprised if they come up with anything. I have no idea what they're going to run. Yes, yeah, don't share strats. That's an interesting thing to know. Um, okay, teams are ready. Like, they have access to it, but we, we try to, like, we think it's more healthy to start your own stuff and like try to figure out what you think is gonna be good we both we all do scrim stuff like that and we'll share our comp videos and things like that but we don't actively uh like say hey run this strat because what might work for one team in one division might work differently for another team in a different division you know that and pilot skill check and all that yeah and that definitely um in terms of developing a team leader that's definitely a good way to do that very important because you know as we're getting to this match i know we're kind of getting a little off topic but yontao's got a baby on the way and that's going to take away from comp experience and my goal is to get 2d20 set up as with the two teams to kind of get them going for that and get them raising their own little pilots but yep here comes the action i'll start off with team one which would be 2d20 and we'll go from there uh, so, 2D20, we got Riss and the Phoenix Hawk, Indigo, Balrog, Crusader 6T, Canadian Cyrus, Assassin 21, Trans Cat Girl, and the Cyrus 4D. We got played in a Crusader 6T and another Cyrus 4D. Cyrus is so popular. I'm going to check out the builds and give you an idea what they're running. What's the enemy team running? Or, uh, excuse me, Bacon Pirates. What are they running? Well, we got on Bacon Pirates. They've got triple Cyrus with DPS builds and then triple, uh, well, sorry, one Thunderbolt and two Quick Draws with uh, triple Large X Pulse. So, definitely Brawly as well. They're sending their lights up on the wall to scout and their heavies into the basement, it looks like. Ooh, interesting. Uh, so looking at the build, so the Phoenix Hawk is actually running E-Large lasers. The Crusaders are also running E-Large lasers. Uh, the Osiruses are obviously running for a small pulse with the 4Ds, and the Assassin 21 is an SRM bomber. And we already begin to see the slightly blue laser trade against the three Osiris pack. Um... I think giving it to it right now, the blue lasers have a limited advantage. The large expulse is good, but the large expulse has to get in closer to get value. The Cyruses seem to feel that from uh, Bacon Parts as they decide they do not like to get free damage and then drop away from the wall. Yeah, large expulse requires more face time as well. There's cover up on the walls where the uh, uh, 2D20s um, nuisance value are positioning, so they can take cover uh, in between burns, which is something the large expulse laser can't really trade against as well. We're seeing kind of a fanning motion coming out of 2D20 nuisance value as they seem to be kind of spreading out a little bit. They definitely picked up the Crusaders for the idea that they would be an answer to a Brawl team, but with large X pulse, that is not a thing they have to worry about. Notice also that oddly enough, Bacon Parts did not go for their Kappa. I think they wanted to take a big aggressive initiation, but maybe possibly the Crusaders slowed them down. Um, they did get up Theta, and they didn't stay in the basement, which is a very good move for Bacon Pirates. A lot of people go basement and then get stuck there. And I think them not falling into that trap is really smooth. Yeah. I, I'm definitely favoring a nuisance value here with the uh, mech lab portion of this drop. Um, there is one mech dropping down from 2D20 trying to go for the cap. Their team should be telling them right now that there is a heavy presence moving toward Kappa. 
Trans I definitely hope so. <laughs> should be getting the intel to get out. They've had All the jump right, jets to get up, I expect. But there's a chance yeah, the JJs they could... are pretty good on the Osiris, so they should be able to full yeah. disengage. Uh, but that's the oh, thing no. right there. That's the thing that a lot of people run into that they don't talk about. And it's easy for us to be like, oh, well, look, they ran into a wall. When you're hot in the seat and you have three Osiris's chopping at your bit, yeah, it's a little problematic. All right, but they did navigate that range. Oh, one Osiris gets out, oh. the other goes down. <gasps> oh, no. Okay, but disengage. Oh, All right, disengage. Both legs are oh, open. Damage. Oh, 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 oh. That is not where that guy wants to be. Fibble they got the jump jets to get, to get out. out. They so this do. is out of bounds for Fibble's width. They need to get up in a couple of seconds or it's over. Oh. So that's a successful pickoff there from the Osiris. Is drawing yep. pressure. A mech drops down probably to distract and then messes up while trying to get out. So early lead here for Bacon Pirates and they're getting a secure cap off of that. So they have a cap mm -hmm. advantage as well. So that quickly and all of a sudden a shift towards the paradigm. We now have a fairly big advantage like look at the percentiles right now bacon pirates actually not taking too much bad damage trade they're finally getting bacon pirates is in their optimal and the blue lasers are trying to get a little more value and deny this but uh bacon pirates is in their win con right now bacon pirates coordinating their peaks a little bit yet too it kind of looked like initially there that's kind of dropped off and once i mentioned it but oh, uh, there you go you just had to talk about it a little bit <laughs> yeah so they've got the two cap advantage. They've got a mech kill advantage. I still think they're behind in terms of drop deck, but they're definitely looking quite sharp right now, Bacon Pirates. And that's kind of the thing with Bacon Pirates too, is that they've been playing a little bit together for a while. So their comp experience is starting to show a bit with their peaks, with their uh, like coordination. GD20 Nuisance Value, again, I will say that they have some very quality pilots and they have grown so hard and so fast over the time. But they are a lot of these are very new to comp. And so it's going to be interesting to see if veterans mix in with new players, who, however good potential, can beat a team that is a little more seasoned. That's why I, didn't, I was talking about not underestimating bacon parts in this fight, because it's, it's sometimes in some divisions, it's less about how well you perform and how much they make a mistake. Like the opponents need to make one mistake and you need to have the initiative to capitalize on that. Right now, Bacon Pirates is doing pretty... I mean, they don't really need to do anything. They, they've taken the two-cap lead. It's really a nuisance value to get, get their value. They don't want to get whittled down, so they're, they're making a move here toward cap to either defend it from what they thought was going to be an attempt, or maybe they're trying to get a pick here. I don't think that the Thunderbolt and Quickdraw are going to have enough jump jets to jump up on the wall, though, not from this angle. But they and can... also think... Go down ahead. on trade angles, maybe, and uh, trade like one viewer versus the Crusader if the Crusader peeks into this at oh, the cap. Ooh, cap. You see that shifting? It's like two quick trolls, Night Mox and Lusaka. Okay, so we do I think they're just trying to get an angle on both the quick draw and the Thunderbolt. They might be able to jump up if they go to this back wall. I know that there's uh, a well, Crusader didn't see that, they've lost a side torso. Yeah, it. that side torso is gone. XL check, uh, passed so light engine. Keeping themselves alive a little bit longer. Yeah, I that, that mech is just thirty three percent. If they overheat it all, they're gonna be done. Down to one ear large laser though. They lost, lost the arm. The arm. Yeah, that's effectively a mech kill, more or less. Like yeah. That, uh, Theta's being flipped right now. Someone has gone to the basement. I think it's the assassin. No, the assassin is on the wall. Bacon parts hasn't noticed this yet. If they did notice it, I think they would take this fight. There goes the uh, last crusade or one of the crusaders, but that was kind of a given already. Yep. And this crossfire that Bacon Parts has got going on right now is definitely getting their value and definitely punishing the enemy team. Because the Osiris the from Trans Cat, Trans Cat Girl is grabbing the Theta Cap. Now it has and to be low. There's a couple uh, Osiris. Just a decap too, yeah. and I mean the decap helps. Uh, it's very, I mean, with one light mech down, one Crusader down, and it's just a large X pulse like. I think that part of the reason why this got a little difficult is because the Crusader 6Ts got a little bit closer in order to help with the wolf pack, and I think that just put themselves in optimal, the large expulse, and that's where we're seeing a lot of the efficiency or the drop-off of the range fall-off. Like, it, the large expulse, are, they're, they're just having a field day with it. They have one mech that they definitely don't want to deal with, and that's the Crusader 6T. It seems like Indigo is trying to pull back in order to maybe make yeah. it work, but yeah, it's too little too late. That's uh, nine large X pulse lasers blasting into single targets. That's, that's uh that's high DPS. Any uh anytime you move out of cover for an extended period, that's probably just a dead mech. Um 
you know, Bacon Pirates looking really good here. Um, yeah, they brought it back. I mean, the first drop can be a very chaotic drop, yeah. and I respect what the play that uh, Nuisance Value is trying to do, but it definitely seems that the cohesion is paying off really well oh, yes. for Bacon Pirates. Coordination, Look at that movement right now. Uh, movement, drop calling, target focus, very well done from Bacon Pirates. Better than I'd expect from a, a middle division team that's kind of at the bottom of their division. I don't know what's been going on elsewhere for Bacon Pirates because they're looking pretty good here right now. I was going to say, their only like unfortunate match was against NAF, and NAF is on a different level right now. So honestly, I think they just, you know, they probably <clears throat> had some tough matches, maybe potentially got mental. It's the first thing since uh, the World Series. So a lot of teams were getting back into the groove. IC has always been great for that. Uh, not to talk about this like this match is already over, but 2v6 oh. is a little difficult to pull off at this point. I'd I would be, be very impressed. impressed. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And they're going for it like these Canadian Cyrus and Terrence Catgirl trying to get a pick off. We already see a leg coming off of Canadian Cyrus. He does go down next. Will they be able to get one scoop, one kill? Catgirl dipping, diving, moving along. Legs open. Everything's open. And there it goes. Nuisance Feast showing that it's the true nuisance to nuisance value. See, I got it in. Two points. Swish. That's, that's a different style of drop than I was anticipating. Um, but yeah, definitely worked here. Uh, so it was a wall strat versus a mobile um, high DPS, but not exactly brawler. And here yeah, of, of, yeah. Uh, Bacon Pirates. Both kind of teams working, doing uh, something I wasn't expecting. So. Yeah, working the angles. So well done from Bacon Pirates. I really like that movement. Yeah. And honestly, I always respect the good three and three usage. So they use three Osiris's, they use three quick draws. They won't be able to, or no, not three, uh, two quick draws and a Thunderbolt. Yeah. But, you know, I like those because it does make it a little bit tougher for some teams, right? Because they're like, hey, I'm shooting the quick draw. Which quick draw? Hey, I'm shooting the Osiris. Which Osiris, right? Like little yes. things like that can sometimes throw off, especially teams that are trying to get their bearings. Haji, though, whoa, 704 damage. That's amazing damage. And yeah, for, um, uh, nuisance value, not a lot of great damage. Uh, Indigo Brower, 192, closely followed by Plato, 181. Plato was the first one to go down. So, okay damage, but tough, difficult. And we'll move on to the next match. Trying to load back into lobby here. Um, I'm liking the team damage out of Bacon Pirates, so I don't know if you have that up on your... Ooh. I don't. What? Give me so, it. Let me, let me tell me about it. All right. Uh, Hodge has five in their uh -huh. quick draw. Uh, Lusankra has ten. Uh, Nightmox has only three. Uh, Pickle has thirteen. Nuisance oh. Beast has ten. And Fear is the Mind Killer has sixteen. So none of that is that high, right? Sixteen no. is the top. But everybody's got a little bit, you know? There's three, I was going to say three that with double <laughs> digits on the team. They damage. were fiending for those kills. They're like, get out of the way. I'm going to hit you. I'm going to do it. That's exactly what happened. Yeah. Well, now we move on to Tourmaline Desert. Good old... I mean, I will say I expected a lot more teams to throw a lot more snipey long range, but I've now seen the breadth of different strats on this map, which I, I talked about this in other casts. A lot of it, I believe, is 100% due to the, like the mech changes, the, the weapon changes, quirk changes. Like, you're seeing different mechs that you never get to see before. Like, that Thunderbolt, like, yeah, we saw, like, medium pulse builds back in the day. Maybe some, like ear large laser kind of trade like some like but it was it was very underused now we see medium pulse builds like that quick draw like the quick draw was kind of used but not like obviously with the weapon system a large explosive changed its entire and then the osiruses right like the osiruses alone like giga quirked and you know feel a lot better people enjoy them a lot more i love that yeah though osiris is seeing play um just has a really high dps with the current quirks so seeing a lot of it right now these past couple of weeks used to be the javelin with the heavy machine guns would have been mm -hmm. the auto pick for this uh that type of a light tonnage drop but now it's the osiris so um good to see some of the less played mechs kind of come into the rotation of being meta for a little bit at least like that orion 1b that you enjoyed right yeah uh -huh. yeah that was uh yeah <laughs> I, I still hate the orion just i haven't played it since it got buffed but i have no interest in what? it because it's just so mobile. Right. And, and like the weapon mounts are so low. I just ah, uh, I I Rex. bought the IS Orion oh, God, me. and I never liked it. I like the Orion 2C, wow. but the IS Orion, it does not 
you know, and it's, wow. it's been buffed. I haven't played it since it got buffed. Maybe it'd be different now. It's so good. But... Like the quick play, like I know quick play brawl, people hate doing it. Homie, the Orion VA, it slaps so hard and it just has so much armor. Just yeah. do a little bit of selfish baiting. You're going to have a field day with it. The thing is, it I hated it because of its weapon mounts and its mobility. And th that hasn't changed. They just gave it a bunch no. of armor and slim like weapon quirks or something. But it does balance it out. Like they aren't the armor is really what it stands out to me. I know we're going off a little bit off topic, but it's Mech World Line. We like mechs. Uh, the Orion, like it just got so much armor. I think it was. I can't remember if it got structured too. They're just so tanky. Like they're they're equivalent to like some of the assaults now. Like just look at the numbers for them, and I, I it makes up for the mobility. Uh, absolutely, a little armor torso twisting. You're you're just unfair in some cases. Like in a one v one, you're in close range. You should win that fight. Like, I don't even care what mech. Like, there's only a few mechs I would say, like, yeah. that, especially brawl-wise, oh, you should win that fight. Maybe a catapult beats it. That would probably be the most, unf like, tough matchup for a low tonnage mech to fight you. But it's so good. All right, the teams are locked. <laughs> 360 tons coming out of uh, Bacon Pirates. Let's see it. Like, uh, half asleep or something here. Thanks for waking me up. 360, 15 tons light. That is yeah. maybe meaningful. Maybe speed brawl? You know, I love me some speed brawl. That's the only thing I love, like, I love watching Mech Online Line and I like the changes. Uh, trade fights still kill me a little bit, like, unless it's, like, super active trading where it's, like, you know, actual 2v2s or something like that. But sometimes just watching Blue Lasers, Two Blazers, things, that puts me to sleep. I, you gotta give me some brawl. Give me some DACA at least. You know, laser vomit's pretty, but it's just it's just pretty colors. That's that's all it is to me. I know, sacrilegious. How dare I say that? You Good know, it's fun. I like trading too. Um, but yeah, well, it's to be in the brings scene. a lot of that brawl for those of us who do enjoy that. All right, I'm over at Bacon Pirates right now, and they heard me complain. They're like, you know what? Screw you, buddy. We got three Charger 3Ks, all running in four large expos by Ray Razor, Falkenhine, and Nightmox. And it looks like they're going to the left side peak. We also are being joined by three Vulcans. Okay, I love that. Uh, we got one Vulcan, the 5T by Haji, the two large, three Euro medium. And the other Vulcans are running two light PPCs, four heavy machine guns, I believe, on one of them. But the other one is running five mini pulse, a throwback. What do you got for uh, nuisance value? So Nuisance Value is running large X-Pulse, but small laser chargers. So that is definitely oh. more brawly. And they back that up with uh, some SRMs, and they're making a Theta play here as well. So, oh, an aggressive Theta Firestar. play. Ooh. So it's Brawl so versus Brawl, kind of. In this case, um, Bacon Pirates with more large X-Pulse lasers will take the, uh, the uh, receive team role for this drop. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Like the... Ooh, this is going to be a very interesting match because it's going to come down to who can get a catch, who can get a pick. And Nuisance Value is just like, no, we're coming for you. We're, we're going straight in. Yeah. They do t they still they take a pit stop. They get Theta. That was kind of them. Um, the Vulcans are fast, though. They go, like, 130 kph. I don't know what the uh, 6M goes. Maybe a little slower. I mean, it's lagging. Yeah, 121 on red herrings. So um, it'll be a little bit slow. It is a light PPC times two plus four heavy machine gun i'd expect that to be a lot faster or have more guns something's not quite right with that build in my books yeah it's interesting uh notice that distance value is going for a different positioning it looks like they're going to up to the sniper roost it might be they don't might not have the yeah, intel they haven't seen any of the assaults yet i do not believe so 2d20 has yeah. got to check the uh the usual receive type positions um and which get is that fair intel. like i can respect that the timing, though, is going to be a little tough for them, I believe. Uh, we do see a, a, one of their mechs split off is going towards Gamma, I would appear so. And it looks like, I mean, right now, Bacon Parts is in a really good spot, though. Yeah. They just need oh, to get they're... a little bit of range of their chargers, set them up for uh, for receive. A quad large X-Pulse should cut down legs yeah. pretty fast. I was at first thinking that they shouldn't have given up that spot, but I actually think I respect it more. Because yeah. they're going to just get distance. They're just going to get... Yep. Much, oh, don't fall into that trench. Uh, the they're going to get as much distance flat ground. I think that's good. Absolutely. Anywhere they can shoot legs from for like 300... For, sorry, more like 500 meters worth of shooting legs. That would be a good place for them to set up and then spread, the you know, 80 to 150 meters apart. Something like that. 
nuisance value seems to i mean for a second there i think they were just having a camp out they were just hanging out be like this is our home now we don't want to fight anymore but looks like they are just engaging it looks like they sent their uh srm bombers to go maybe take sigma for them their light mech did not take gamma maybe we're just hoping to get info this is a wild match like i i these teams are just hanging out <laughs> well, they, they started not a lot of trading cap. either I think they might have called back when they got the intel, but they actually need to keep going for that cap because unless they're going to bowl up and push right away, which I don't think is a good situation, they should really get a sec get a two-cap situation here maybe and then uh, try to force the opponents to walk into somewhere where you can do something. But they don't want to lose this fire starter either and continue yeah. to go for Gamma would put that at Oops. risk. I mean, charges are pretty mobile. Yeah, I, I, I agree with everything. I mean, the char that fire starter has been spotted. The thing is that... The only pathing that this uh, Brawl team is going to be able to go is past Death Valley up into the, where the Vulcans are going to get it scouted out. I mean, they're going to get themselves in a two-cap lead, which might be good. All right, so they're definitely getting the scouting info. Yeah, so the Chargers are camping at Theta right now for Bacon Pirates. They need more red and better terrain, though, in my books. Um... They're not able Until to shut down a Death Valley push, which is occurring right now. But they're actually pushing up, too. Yeah, those those chargers weren't in positions to punish this movement out of uh, out of uh, Salvage Crew. Or yeah, I'm, I'm nervous for them. I don't know if pushing up... At the, I think pulling back would have been better. Because what's the win con for nuisance value? Yeah. Obviously, they're wanting to get in close. So them pushing up kind of gives them an advantage. I mean, it does get the damage out. If, if, uh, we also have a 6v5 situation because the light mech is coming in very late. Yeah. Oh, we see a little bit of stalling, though. Breaks. Oh, there we go. Now there we're we going. Go. Now we're going. I definitely favor uh, salvage, uh, sorry, nuisance value in this particular situation here with the ranges as they are. These yeah, you said that last time, and you jinxed the hell out of nuisance value. So I want you to hesitate on that one. We're, okay. We'll see how it goes because the focus fire from Mega Parts is very good. And here we go. We have Fibblewitz going in first. A little bit of stalling. With the, if it's a brawl push, you got to push. Fibblewitz is definitely being the cold target. Legs open. And staying alive, though. Maybe drop yeah. a pit. Yeah, Barry does get the kill well. of Ray Razor. Yep, Charger 3K is gone. We have the final mech. The Fibblewitz does get picked up. Another Charger gets straight out for it. Looks like Nightbox is being the focus fire for a lot of these mechs. And it's a brawl. Self-destruct. A little overheat. We got Haji in the Vulcan 5T running the i think the medium pulse and the down it goes large in er medium uh we have a nice little scrap going on srm bombers who've got into the fight definitely popping legs and there we have it worked out see that's what i like about bro it's in and out it. easy dirty there's a lot of rear shots going on there um some players kind of circling behind in groups of two trying to core out people from the rear uh oh, low survival number parts, 69 percent or... there both teams doing a little bit of that. Um, oh. Bacon Pirates almost cored out. Uh, what's how do you pronounce that Charger pilot's name? Oh, uh, we got per oh per Pericron, but Perry for short. Okay, Perry got that. Resource points. Thank yeah, you. so uh, yeah, rear damage from both sides kind of going. Oh that wow, way. I see that. Yeah, and one touch red CT. Lotto J got both legs open there. At orange. Uh, if they uh, take Play a bad bump yeah. here, we might have to. Uh, I'd have to have a delay. Nobody else is going to be able to get Gamma. Sorry, Plato is actually our known philosopher of the team. And so if they get legged, they'll talk about why they got legged. And it was the journey and path they took. And they probably will bring in, I don't know, the railroad uh, Charlie car problem at some okay. point. It's going to be great. So they're a bit so. of a role player in that regard? Uh, I, I, I wish I could say it's role playing. I think it's just their life at this point. I think they have fully succumbed to philosophy. Uh, but anyways, I, I really liked what we saw from that push. I was I, I do think that the Bacon Press did try to pull back at the last minute, and they almost pulled it off because you saw the stalling. This I think uh, uh, Nuisance Value stalled twice in that engage, if you're not counting the very early Sniper Roost, and so it almost worked out their effort. And the focus fire from both teams was a little off, but uh, one of the things I did like to see, and I'm going to call it out, was Fibble Wits, who was clearly the focus target for both Bacon Pirates, peeled away and made a point to just not really focus about getting the damage in but just staying alive and as a brawl push knowing you're the first call base which is usually the first one going in to do that is a difficult thing to like initiate the fight and not die right away just save so much time for your other teammates to get in so that was uh that was good that was uh it was, it was really good to see that 
uh, Philip Woods being one of the new pilots to comp in general. So, uh, good damage though, 470 damage out of parry, and then coming out for 330 damage with a uh, Haji and that Vulcan 5T, and that was the large laser ear medium build. So, definitely uh, put in some value in that mech. All right, now we go to the team swap. Yeah. And uh, Nuisance Value keeping this a fun and interesting game by bringing themselves up a win. Baker Parts has got a drop win as well. Yeah, we got a, a tied match here. Nice to see. That's a caster, absolutely. I mean, sweeps are they're gonna happen and it's not like most of the time it's well earned it's not like a, oh you know huh that's that was a really boring easy shutout match a lot of times it is a good fight but this is just way more exciting <laughs> yeah yeah i you know i enjoyed that we had three chargers on each team but they had very different builds on them and they required different ways to play the particular builds that they had so Nice to see a, a chassis have enough versatility to it that there's different, um, not just different builds on the single chassis, but uh, on the single variant, but also different variants that are play. Right, like they actually see play nowadays. Yeah, so good. I I just loved how much they transversed that map. I thought like they could have run a marathon at that point. Both teams just charging around the entire map. It was great. <laughs> And I definitely can appreciate that both teams were just trying to fill each other out. Like, they, uh, New Savannah's at one point thought about maybe going for caps and then decided just to push in anyways. Um, uh, Baker Parts just were obviously going for like maybe the sniper roost position, but then they were like, well, well maybe we overwatch over Fox 5 Ridge. And then they're like, well, maybe we overwatch Theta. Um, they try to take advantage of the Death Valley push out, which maybe starting there would have been much more formidable, but. Again, both teams wanting to play the info gathering, but Tourmaline is a big map. And without sending your light mech out to somebody takes a lot of confidence or foolishness because if that light mech gets picked for how big Tourmaline Desert or, or, or Tourmaline Desert is, like you can lose the caps easily. Okay, I'm gonna point out Bacon Pirates. I don't know if they're watching or not, but my little pro tip for them would be next time to take one of their Vulcans and put it up in Aspire for scouting. Because you, you kind of had the builds known already. So there was going to be some large X pulse lasers from the chargers able to punish mm. back, but it's it's a very low number. You put somebody up in a spire, you can start tracking like three quarters of the map, right? Right. And just yeah, relay the intel point. without actually risking much damage. There's no Goss PB snipers that are going to pick your your Vulcan out of the sky. Um, so like yeah, the, the worst box, I have to do is a single large X pulse. Yeah. That's it. Yeah. So that that'd be one little adaptation just to track the movement better. And then they would be in position to punish the Death Valley pushout, or they could scatter back away from Theta and um, and be in position to guard Theta from range. That, that'd be one adjustment maybe to make, which you don't always think of these things during the drop, you know. Oh, yeah. Hindsight My favorite thing being... to say, we, we, we get to sit back in AC cooled, watching our little TVs oh, yeah. and stuff like that. They're sweating bullets and crying and yelling at each other or, or saying, yeah, let's get them. Like they're, they're in that. They're feeling the emotions, which is beautiful. But I, I still, it's good to give out this insight. Like there's, I, I already feel like that the same thing for a lot of the matches that the matches I've played in, some of the matches I've casted. Intel is, is what you need. Yeah. Intel in a lot of, no matter almost in most divisions, like obviously in the higher divisions, Things just get typical when you see one movement, or as we talked about earlier, um, no movement in a certain area that tells you a lot of information. Like you just get intel by not seeing presences. But for these newer teams, and, and I, again, like going up to like, I don't know, Div B probably, uh, intel just gives you everything. You got to know what they're running. You got to know roughly where they're going. And yeah. that will potentially get you a win con. So like, I think we kind of saw that a little bit, but both teams kind of balled up. So neither had good intel. I mean, the fire sort of was scouting around, I guess. Yeah, it's not fair to blame a team for, you know, lack of intel when intel wasn't available. Like, Spectator gets the bird's eye view, can see all the bills, <laughs> all that, right? So we're kind right. of guessing to an extent what they did or not did not manage to see. Like, it, okay, so even when they see the entire enemy team, did they um, did they actually get builds or not? That's always a question that we we don't know. 
Um, that we can it's easy for us to assume like if you're seeing a charger and it's coming at you pretty fast it's like okay there's probably something close range on it you get hit by a large explosive you're like okay that's a little worrisome but yeah. again that's easy info to like maybe ascertain if you've done enough comp yep. but for i mean again i'm not saying that bacon pirates or anything like that wouldn't have that information uh nuisance value probably should have that information at this point but it's uh that's a that's not an easy thing to retain but to i was honestly seeing, hoping for a little more i know this is really contradictory what i just said but i was hoping for a little more snipey range i wanted some long range trading uh because i like it on tourmaline desert i think it's actually a lot of fun to see on tourmaline desert i'm hoping for stalkers here and stalkers are great. we got stalkers all right oh look yeah at that. go so ahead go first. i like the stalker on this map i don't like the stalker on uh viridian vlog quite as much so just with the drop tonnages and all that this is i agree not really the we got ER large stalkers from vacant pirates times one times two one's a five one's a six and they have an annihilator going up for uh is it called jgx hill or no huh. sjr hill right uh i feel well, i actually don't know what they call of it but yeah. i know exactly i i've heard pride rock as well but uh, you know like yeah. reference no no shame so they're, they're gonna um, be putting it up in an anchor position that's basically what we're trying to get at here yeah 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 um okay so got some interesting ones for you so we have ourselves a two phoenix hawks running just standard seven small poles we got a cat girl with a hero vulcan 4s from four now these stalkers yep that's right this is about bringing stalkers but they're stalker 5s but they're not only bringing 60 yards laser they're all bringing four s from twos and then there's a warm 6r with two er peeps two light goss so they have long range. They have a half and half long range with a relatively healthy wolf pack, but then close range. Yeah. Maybe maybe a generalist build to like answer brawl potentially. Okay. So yes, it's definitely going to be for if they get brawl rushed, right? But I still think it's a mistake. Um, it's not going to help that much if you do get Brawl Rushed, and it's a pretty big liability if you're trading because you're now carrying ammunition. Mm. And you're also missing some heat sinks, uh, maybe targeting computers. Something's missing as well. But you know, even if you're carrying a single ton of ammo, it's still something that could explode because this Stalker often goes to open structure. I, does the Stalker have structure quirks? Kind of feels like that because it, it just seems to get open structure a fair bit of the time. And, um, you know they're probably putting the ammo on the head, and they're probably only bringing one ton. Right. Uh, you know that's still... SRM twos. You don't need that much. Yeah. So there's probably ways to play it and play it smart and safe. I mean, right now they are just doing typical stalker stuff. They are trying to keep the theta cap denied, doing a little bit of tickle damage. We do see a gamma flip coming out of uh, the nuisance value, keeping their wolf pack secure. Uh, but I will say for range trading purposes, it is a little towards Bacon Pirates because that Warhammer needs, I think, to get a little bit closer. Now, once it's able to get in closer, it's going to do some good trades. But right now, it looks like it's even like a 1v3. That Stalker is the only one getting trades. Ooh, dodge that airstrike, though. Yeah, there's a little bit so, of repositioning going on. Bacon Pirates have got the intel that they're playing against trade decks, so they are moving out of their initial positions to secondary positions that are closer up. The Annihilator is currently trading at 1,500 meters. They're doing uh, well, probably a third of their weapon damage. But that's that's kind of the point of this trade, right? Like, the yeah. trading is meant to do tickle damage. Like, the Sucker 5 is are great because they have some good quirks, and then they can boat in that giant target computer on it, so they get a little more value out of it. Um, I mean, this is kind of what they want. Uh, nuisance value, if they're going to pull this off, they kind of need to either equalize those trades and just trade better, or kind of do what they're doing right now, which is kind of squirrel, kind of fight off the enemy wolf pack. I think they're going to maybe go for Theta. I mean, they could absolutely just go grab Sigma, and maybe that'd be the safer play. Sigma's probably the safer play, but... You know, I it's possible that the lights try to dive your big boys while you're going for the side cap. And there's so much distance. Um, it's a long walk to go to the cap and to come back. I guess, arguably, maybe that's part of the reason why a nuisance value went for these stalkers, right? With the SRMs. So like, yeah. hey, we want to go for the side cap. Here's an answer. Now, I'm not saying it, it that it's a great answer. It would help. But it, yeah, and it, more importantly, it might be a deterrent. Just enough for someone to be like, do I really want that? I mean, Firestars are pretty good, so... 
I think it's gonna just gonna be someone's gonna get weakened enough on one person's team. Right now, it feels like the stalker by what is it? Indigo is down to eighty one percent, so that one's taking the yeah. like the most amount of trade, but it it's weakening. It's well well spread the damage, but it is weakening. Um I'm gonna have to see something out of the Warhammer here from Perry just to see what they're doing if they can make something happen. That Warhammer is kind of uh, maybe the difference maker here in terms of build availability, using a little bit right. of speed getting onto the flank. And they definitely are trying to reposition them. The Stalkers are taking that Sniper Roost for Nuisance Value, but I, I agree with the Warmer 6R because that's going to be a mech that is going to be able to trade and not take return trade if it can get the position right. Ooh, the Annihilator, 84% CT focus, down to orange armor, actually sizable damage. Yeah, that's actually pretty good focus fire there from uh, whoever's shooting at it, which is probably five different players. Yeah, yeah. Now, the other two stalkers, though, fairly fresh. I mean, they're okay. The Annihilator, so this is a fun tip. If you're losing your trades, stop trading. Well, like, or you can, slow you them can down. Wait. Um, I don't know if you can stop entirely yet as, as the Annihilator. Not entirely, but... but, like, you don't have to initially, yeah. like, I'm off a cooldown, I need to peek again. Yeah. Because what happens is you become predictable, and then, like, pre-firing doesn't always happen in this game. Like, it's only certain weapons do it really well, Here but we pre-firing can absolutely happen. We gotta move. So... It's a push. Oh, well, there's a mech I see on Gamma. This. We have the push in. Stalkers are not oh, going to be able to Oh, that was the much. con. I guess that was what they were hoping for. But this is a pretty risky play. Two Firestones still alive. Looks like they do spot the fire starters. Not a lot of Overwatch. Canadian Cyrus dipped out of that fight so fast. Ooh. Both legs opened up. And uh, they decided that was just too much. Now, there's an open leg on Haji. Or Haji? Sorry, I think it's Haji. Fire starter. Yeah. yeah, left leg is open. Right leg armor is weak. The thing is that, yeah, the problem, or that problem, but the reality is, is that push probably, I mean, it was an okay push, but now the entering and leaving is the problem. Yep. Like, they just took so much damage to get in and get out. Yeah, you Ooh. take damage going in, you realize it's bad, and you take damage getting out. It just, uh, you get punished twice. Warhammer uh, here, is... Yeah, as you say, taking, yeah. Bender torso open on that Warhammer. So there's definitely pressure here on uh, nuisance value. They are getting trying to flip theta. They might be able to flip it. Oh, they almost got the decap. That's Canadian Osiris with the open legs trying to do that. So one of the other players needs to take that position. Um, maybe Cat Girl with a uh, much healthier. Yeah, ninety-four percent with that Vulcan hero. Yeah, and the Vulcans still have pretty goaded hitboxes. Right, somebody's got to go for theta, but it it shouldn't be Cyrus. <laughs> I mean, now alive. we have Lasanka in that stalker going down to 73%. Match. Oh, but I just realized Indigo Baura 55% with their stalker. That's heat damage. Is it really? Oh. Yeah. Ooh. Oh, wow. That's probably two different ghost heats. I don't think that's just once. Kind of lucky nothing popped there. Yeah, I think so. It, pro it might have happened in that exchange with the Phoenix Hawks. Maybe the pilots felt like they needed to help their teammates. That could be. And so the. Took an extra burn to make it happen. Definitely have to play a lot more gingerly if they want to get that more value of that mech, though. Now right, the right now, is 77% with that damage center torso. So they're not looking so bad. That's that's the value of keeping yeah. the mech alive, is that you can rejoin the trades. Just need to slow it down. Match the pace that your teammates are losing their armor. That's how I see it. No, and I think it's absolutely fair. I mean, just staying alive in almost any of these fights, whether it be long range trade, brawl, it doesn't really matter. Staying alive, you're just a, you're a known factor. You st exist still. That is still going to be a mental thing that someone's going to have to think about. Whether they're thinking about it like super on the foremost of their mind, maybe, maybe not. But that still gives you an element of like, hey, this mech could exist somewhere. It could take a cap, could pop out behind this corner because it's trying to stay alive and just get free damage. So. As as a trader. Um, what what it is is that if the annihilator didn't exist because it was dead, nobody has to worry about over peaking where the annihilator can see them. If the annihilator backs off, they're not trading anymore. They still exist. You still have to be have scanning the horizon the where the annihilator was to see if maybe they're peaking this time, mm -hmm. or that makes you know sense. if Absolutely. you're gonna over peak somewhere and the annihilator is gonna see you. So um, even if you're not trading, just by continuing this, you provide uh, pressure. Or uh, on the opposing team and uh, Perry in that Warhammer loses a side torso. Light engine is a go. CT is nearly one touch. Yeah, Stalker's lots of focus fire, and there it goes. Yeah, 
little bit of a flank coming out of that stalker there, picking up the kill. And I think that part of this is kind of like what you're talking about, like the overheated stalker is having a hard time getting those initial like trades in now, and so it's having to play a little more careful, so therefore it's a little more out of the fight. You know, all the traders are getting very low by now, um, but the damage spread's still looking pretty good for most of these stalkers. That's the, uh, the stalker advantage. Yeah, I think Baker Parts is kind of having a little bit of the lead still. I mean, the cap game is three cap lead. Yeah. I mean, Wolfpack's three doing cap, some work. Three cap with 350 to 300, so it's not that far off or unrealistic that 2d20 nuisance value is going to pick up a cap win here. Ooh, look at that. Ooh, I like the positioning of the fire shows with the stalker, giving a little bit of armor to help out with that. We have a push. And on that's the kind of the that's kind of the interesting fun thing about these kind of fights, the trade fights. The wolf pack gets more and more important as the game goes on because as we're pointing out, all these range backs getting super beat up, super weak. And all you need is one surgical strike or hammer in some cases, and you can take out a range back right away. So Theta's it's been flipped, our... and there's a Stalker yep. up on Theta now. Two, the Light Pack is going for Gamma. The Stalker on Theta is vulnerable right now. I don't know if the intel exists for that. Yeah, because they don't have anybody who's able to catch the vision. It's just the Sniper Roost mechs, and those Sniper mechs are defending Theta. Like, they were saying the Light Mech moved oh. to the right, so that might have been enough. Cyrus oh. is trying to make a play at Theta. It should have been one of their teammates who actually had leg armor, but Cyrus is trying to get the Theta cap. And now they are down. Side cap going to be flipped right shortly, Gamma. There was an opportunity to try and jump the Stalker. I don't think the intel was there to do it. No. But... We have gamma. And now with Cyrus down, it's going to be a little bit harder to try and pull off that cap when less mobility remaining. Indigo is not trading much anymore. I don't blame him. They're at 43%. Nothing's open, but everything is internally damaged except for the head. Oh, they, they're overheated again. Oof. Here we go. It's a gamma pick move. Trans, ca Trans Cat Girl and Wrist are trying to go for a pick at gamma. Their victims are going to be gone before they get there, and it would have been an outnumbered fight anyways. So, Yeah, I mean, the damage on the Fire Stars is a little less, but it is three of them. And, like, Light Max fighting other Light Max, you never want that fair fight. I will say, Haji, though, those legs are very serviceable right now. Yep. We get a pick on uh, one of the legs and then take the fight away from the leg mech, make it a 2v2. That could be a winnable fight. Maybe they're fine with just getting the caps because, again, yeah. the two cap lead is going to keep them in a win con. Yeah, they do need the two, though. They can't just run one cap. They do need two. Uh, they're dropping their two stalkers out of the crow's nest now. They're going to push for Theta. I'm seeing mm. a push up onto Theta. Um, it is Gamma's getting to that currently. desperation time. Where you definitely yeah. need to shove everything onto a cap and hope to to get it or hold it. The fire stars are moving away. I don't know if they have the intel. Maybe they have the intel the stalkers dropping. It looks like a big shifting coming out of Baker Parts right now. Yeah, these stalkers are incredibly vulnerable right now, but they're going to try to time it to, to bring their lights back from Gamma, make a big play at Theta. That's what I'm reading here. These stalkers oh, are going to reveal themselves too early, though. They Is that UEV over up. Gamma active? Uh, I don't think so. The mini map no, doesn't. Okay, uh, okay, okay things there. I thought it would have been pretty good info for them. So, yeah. If they aren't shot down, the the mini map continues to display them as being up. Stalkers are now revealed. Everyone's just pushing Theta right now. Everybody's yeah, yeah. It's, it's and time. look, we have the fire star is not in this fight at all. So, ooh, if yeah, they can stay alive, SRMs maybe coming in a little more usefulness. Indigo has been halved. They're powered down. They're pretty much dead, anyways. Um. Yeah, self-destruct. Yep. Lato's going in. Plato. I mean, okay, the fire stars are coming back. They are trying to get the flip on Sigma. Plato, if they can, would probably just want to see if they can get the flip on Theta. Yeah, the caps are what's important right flap. now, not the kills. I mean, kills are important too, but... Blue lights yeah, have but made right it back. now, the fire Nuisance stars Valley to win. Is, yeah, exactly. Uh, they're in, but Phoenix Hawks are in. I mean, uh, Phoenix Hawk and uh, Vulcan. So the fight is beginning in a little bit of earnest as we have a 3v4-5 situation if you count. The Overwatch by the United is still pepping away. Uh, but a lot of these mechs are weak. We have the tech drive taking the damage. Well, and again, it looks like it's just a biding there. of time. Get, get those SRMs onto stuff. If they can get the leg off of Fear the Mind Killer, that'll definitely help the oh. cap. 
as well. Catgirl might be focusing that. It looks like they know that the Catgirl could pick that up, and they're trying to focus Catgirl out as well. Uh, the Phoenix Hawk is trying to focus on the other Firestarter. Both Firestarters being 1v1 in a way. Now that the Stalkers are down on Theta, seconds. this needs to be kited out. If Risk can maybe kite out the lights, take some legs, find a cap. Oh, oh, self-destruct. Okay. There, there's still I mean, a chance. It's 25 seconds on the clock. Is that math? Yeah, actually. Oh, hold on. I wasn't paying That's attention a... to the time. I was just looking at the caps. This might be a, a win uh, due to a lack so. of time to get the caps back if Risk just stays alive. Wow. Um, I lost track of that. So. <laughs> well, I got to be there useful sometimes. They can't just all be bluster and excitement. I'm but used yeah. to the five cap format where you you never run out of uh, game time if uh, if players are actually going for caps. The caps the get them first, but there this we go. is a, a win. Value. Wow. Yeah, two d twenty picking up the win. I think that stalker d flip or the like, d cap yep. is important. Um, but yeah, yep. I think and, and th maybe that's why we saw the big shifting because I wasn't paying attention Absolutely. at that time from Bacon Pirates where they were like, "Oh crap, we gotta go." Yeah, I thought it was an early movement. Uh, it was just me not paying attention to the, to the time. So. I missed it. The teams did not. Well played. Uh, yeah, Plato, 853 damage at the top one. I mean, Tech Drive Truck, that Stalker, 719. 772 from Lasanka and that other Stalker. So, really good value. I mean, you'll get the better, better stats, but still. Yeah, I've got... Um, I don't know if there's any team damage there. Let's look at it, Let's look at it real <laughs> quick. I like team damage. I mean, definitely overheat damage. I don't know if we're going to see that, though. Yeah, team damage is only 10 team damage from Lasanka. Oh, so. slacking. Yeah. All right, move on to Viridian Bog. We're here for it. So, uh, Nuisance Value taking a timed out cap win. I mean, they did have three caps at one point, and that probably skyrocketed them pretty far ahead. So, even though they were losing the trades, I mean, they like we were talking about it a lot. Both teams were trying to savior and keep their mechs alive, and I think we saw the benefit of that. As while well, yes, uh, nuisance value was losing mechs; they were bleeding armor in some cases. They stayed alive just long enough for the caps to keep being in their value. And uh, props to the uh, nuisance value wolf pack. Like it did seem like Bacon Parts was going back and forth, trying to make sure they stayed relevant in the game, denying caps and picking up caps. But same thing with nuisance value. Both the, the both that wolf packs were more focused on the cap game to a certain extent, um, and I think it paid off for them. Well, not think, obviously, but still. That was good. That was really good. It was really good to see that. Uh, for me, especially, because uh, Plato, who is the shot caller uh, with uh, Canadian Service being the XO for nuisance value, he hates going cap game. He absolutely detests going cap game. So the fact that they won off a cap game, you know, makes me makes me a little warm inside. Yeah, yeah Uzi there? Yeah. I, okay, I'm cool. liking that, uh, that win there. I should have been paying attention to the clock. That's something I missed, but unlucky. Um, yeah, in hindsight, that definitely changes up the stalker play. It wasn't early. I thought it was early, but playing the clock, definitely the right play at the time. Um, we're going on to 425 drop ton limit for Viridian Bog. Mm -hmm. uh, what are we expecting? Are we going to see the Atlases? I mean, the Atlases have been great. Uh, I won't lie. Uh, I've seen Nuisance Value experiment with them and try to run them out as well uh right now it seems like a pirate comfortability with some of the atlases so i would love to see them try it out i mean it felt pretty good for salvage crew when we ran it um i i also i, I was kind of excited to see that uh nuisance value did try to do a little bit of trading i mean heck even salvage crew like we didn't do any trading the entire time well except for the first match but that wasn't really trading that was being annoying um so like I, I i'm really excited to see this because i think 2d20 as a classic has always been a brawl first kind of team and to see us kind of grow a little bit and get out of our comfort strats is really good and I, i'm really glad that uh, plato and canadian cyrus my veterans uh to help out the second team are seem to be expanding a little bit on the on the on like just the playbook i should say Bacon Pirates definitely has shown that they're willing to do range, though. I would definitely see that they would do 
a little bit more. I, I think Viridian Bog is okay for it. Yeah. I think taking in some really far back positions really helps out. Uh, team two seems to be pretty okay. Like they have some, like the normal uh, spot, especially if you have jump jets to kind of spread out your tonnage a bit more. Yeah, that's something that I was going to point out here is that yeah, the, the range traders, you have a lot more options if they have jump jets. And I'm trying to think, at 425 tons, you're seeing a lot of assaults. The chargers are, are gone for both teams. The stalkers are yeah. more or less gone for both teams. Um, I'm thinking Hatamoto Cheese and Maulers mm. are probably what's going to happen here because um, the Annihilator can't do a push. So there are Annihilators available, but I don't really smell it. And I think it's Atlases and Hatamoto Chi and the um, and uh, Maulers, maybe. I don't like the Mauler, but people are playing it. People like it. So, um, but none of those mechs yeah. have jump jets, really. So who's going to be, like, are they, like, Grasshoppers would be under tonnage. You don't have access to, like, Night Gears or Summoners or, you know, all those other mechs that I really like. Um I'm a little bit wondering what the strats have available to them, just given what the, the mechs are that are available here. Vectors, well, let's think of, ah. let's do, I was going to say, let's try to think of oddball mechs, right? Like, yeah. what, what exists Highlander? out there that... Highlander? Yeah, that's a good one. That's something that you don't get to see too often. And there's, there's like, the there's still good mechs out there. Yeah, I'm just, like, um... range trade assault with jump jets. Like, High Highlander is the only thing that's coming to mind right now. I mean, they've already burnt two of their Crusaders. The Crusader can kind of do some range Yeah, it's training. pretty light tonnage for, for 425, though. Yeah, I don't like it for the last tonnage drops. Like, it just gets focused out yeah. so easily. Like, early game drops is still a little risky. If they don't if they get picked, you have to really work for that value. But... All right, I think it, it's really what it is. It's just Crusaders are just a known factor. You know? Like, people just know. Kill that mech. Yeah, it's a bit of a glass cannon once you start getting these high tonnages. Uh, I'm going to look at builds here real quick because I can do that. Yeah, please do. I've got Javelin with Heavy Machine Gun from uh, Bacon Pirates. They've got two of those. And they did bring Atlases. So Ooh. three Atlases with the large X-Pulse and then a Thunderbolt with large X-Pulse backing it up. Ooh, okay, I'm going to go sneak okay. over to 2D20. They are bringing... Dervish yeah, hero with say. SRM, Dervish with SRM small pulse. Um, actually, six small pulse, two SRM, so that is more small pulse than SRM. Fire starter small pulse and Atlases and uh, an awesome. Yeah, so the X -Pulse. AT is an interesting one because it actually has like there's the charger three K is really good, good, really good quirks for large explosives because they just you can fire them quicker. They have mm -hmm. a, I think a heat gen. Uh, the uh, the atlases are just, I mean, with the armor and the yeah. large explosives, it's just nasty. The AT, what it uh, gets a benefit from, is it has a range quirk for it. So they can punch out a little bit further back, which I think maybe with these atlases, that makes a little sense to me, because the atlases yeah. are probably going to be in the forefront anyways. Awesome doesn't really want to be focused out. Yeah, so... the awesome's going to have to kind of play a little bit back there to keep, uh, keep alive, keep that DPS going out. We're looking at, like, pushing to push here. And yeah, it's gonna be. I think scouting is gonna be important here, um, just so that you don't wander into an outnumbered engagement. Oh, speaking of outnumbered engagement, you see what's happening there by Theta. Now, the mechs on Theta have the speed to get away. It's how much damage are they going to take while getting away? Jumping down two percent from Cat Girl, three percent. Uh, it's okay. Oh, it's not bad. Kinda going a little bit of an unusual path thing they're going to take another punch here or not yeah Maybe sure get out. Oh, they got they got a little taste Ooh, drop it down another like seven percent altogether for that in this Most game. that's to the legs yeah yeah i mean that's what they should be now fire positions go like the atlas is an awesome are trying to chain into this but they will be outnumbered soon so like as far as your like, range yeah. training goes it's going to take this wolf pack the two services and the fire starter to get engaged or yeah. be a buffer. Like in a something's mass gonna have to X happen. Pulse battle, the dervishes have to get into SRM range, and that's going to be a challenge here. Looks like they're kind of trying to do it. At least they're putting out some fire. So, two D twenty has set up a receive line, and I think they're actually the push team. That that's that'll come down to 
angles and focus fire though so that is definitely an option Ooh. to try and do receive here but i think you see wise... a capper going off you see that cat girl fire starter oh, running off to get a cap oh, i don't, I don't like know if this that. is the time for it no i mean i will give it to the corsair the dervish frenzy throwing a lot of srms i don't know how much of their are connecting per se but now they're just out of range definitely needs to get a little closer if they want to get those to hit um Okay, oh, you see stone. Cyrus up top. I mean, they do see the three cap lead, so yeah. yeah here okay, goes. There we go. I was going to say, they're waiting for it. Yep. Yeah, they don't have... Those... Well, those Atlases and Thunderbolt are lagging behind. They're too distracted by the Dervishes. Dervishes doing it's gonna a come lot to focus draw. fire. We'll say that Atlas uh, Ray Razor did go in first. Did get legged already, but those Javelins yeah. are in the thick of it. And this is exactly what they need to do. They need to be able to peel off for their Alice to get a little bit further in. Oh, the awesome we have dropped. One, yep, awesome has dropped. Plato is dropping right after it. Their Atlas Perry is dropping. Maybe they seem to be trying to stay alive. I mean, they get a leg on the javelin. I think just now. Yeah, they did. They like the javelin. All right. So time to regroup here from Bacon Pirates and get somebody else in front of Ray Razor. Ray Razor needs to do hard shielding right now and back Ooh. off that corner. Ray Razor getting picked off from Perry. They did ex just exchange height. Canadian Stars the entire time was putting some shots in the back. The other Dervish still just letting him know that, hey, uh, these SRMs are going to hit you, and I'm going to keep firing to make sure you know. High ground, but, low uh, ground NASCAR right now. Yeah, they just swap leg. places. Plato is in first. Literally, they just decided to swap it out. But Lusanka does get picked before uh, Plato and the Atlas goes down. Plato just using up the armor, probably calling to his teammates. Push! And push they are. Canadian Stars, those SRM bombers coming in. Does get legged, but that leg is one touch for tech drive. Uh, it will probably fall off, which disengages from the fight. TB Kai going in with their job and trying to see to get the finishing kill on Plato. Plato overheating. But Kai does get the kill. Side turns are nearly one. And a fight that I thought for a moment was going to go to uh, Bacon Parts. Somehow, some way, Nuisance Value making their mechs last as long as they can. I mean, they're still getting whittled down. Falkenheim is still fairly fresh. It's, I mean, 78%. And if the uh, Nuisance Value lets this farm keep happening, they will lose this match. But notice also the three cap lead. That's probably helpful. One leg gone. Falkenheim taking that damage. Nice little spread and focus out. Falkenheim trying to get that fire starter. Fire starter doing a good job staying alive. Even though both legs are open. And there yeah. we go. Falkenheim showing they are not ready to quit anytime soon. But gets forced into retirement anyways. Falkenheim having a little bit of trouble tracking uh, there. The arms were locked on that atlas. All the weapons are in the arms. So in that, that type of mech, you definitely need to unlock your arms. You can track the, the lights legs a little bit better. Mm, that's what was happening. Okay, all right. You know, if well, you have weapons, both torsos and arms, I get, I get locking your legs. Definitely, uh, or, sorry, locking your arms. Um, but in the, the case of like the Atlas, everything's in the arms. You want to unlock those arms. That's my personal no, opinion yeah. on that. That makes sense. I mean, it's just a little more mobility, like it, like a little more uh, potential help and accuracy. Arm lock. I understand why people do it, but yeah, I think that's a a fair call. And obviously, in that situation. Would have maybe made the difference, at least getting another kill, which always feels good. Good damage try to parry, 871. Uh, tech Drive Truck brings 602 damage once again, leading it for Bacon Pirates. Well done in both those Atlases. Big shock, Atlas is doing big numbers. Who would have thunk? Yeah, I mean, the Atlas used to be kind of a joke, and then it got some mobility, and it, all of a sudden it was viable to brawl with it, even though brawl wasn't the meta. Mm -hmm. um, and then Large Expulse uh, came out. <laughs> yeah, now it's like top of the heap um i mean i think we've seen atlas those atlases getting used in almost every division yeah it's all playing just... world so um yeah so you know it, it it's seen play in div a and then the lower divisions kind of take note i don't know if the bottom divisions have been using it much but the middle divisions definitely love it they're like yep that looks like a mech Eventually, those Orion 1Bs will, uh, will catch on, for sure, 100%. I, look, there were teams that were using them previously, right? I personally really? would rather not be in a drop where I have to play it. It's that fun. My Orions wow. aren't even skilled. I bought one several years back, and I just couldn't stomach it enough to play it. Like, I bought it back when I was on the old uh, Smoke Adders 505 team. 
from oh, like Intersphere Coalition Season 2 or 3. And I didn't level that thing up. It just felt bad. <laughs> and now we're here at Intersphere Coalition Season 6 and the thing's been buffed and people are playing it and I just, I have no interest. I, I'm sorry. No, don't, don't. It's okay, Thorax. I mean, I, I actually like it because if you start playing these mechs and then realize how good it is, you'll start talking about it, preaching about yeah. it. Just just let 2D20 enjoy their Orions and that's fine. No, that's okay. You know, as long as somebody's enjoying it, that's uh, that's good. There's a mech for, me. for everybody. I, exactly. Yeah. You got but it. I, I think I might have requested to sit out drops rather than play that mech. Straight Are you up serious? honest. I think I might have. Wow. Yeah. Chat, we know that's that's I mean not to be a cool kid, but that's cap, right? Like that's insane. How would you pass him to Ryan? I want to see a rage in his stream. My I stream, mean, everyone's a full echo chamber, so they they yeah. believe everything I say. That was but. that was years ago though. Like it's been buffed two or three times since then. But I Base problems of the Orion are still there. The, the reasons why I didn't like it. That hasn't I, changed. I don't know. I, I've, I've had an Orion for a while, and I I th always, always thought it was the goofiest mech. But once I picked up the Orion before the Giga Quirks, and was running the VA with the AC-20 SRM-6, okay. like, it's just... It just felt good. It just felt fine. Like, it's, it's blocky, but it's an easy thing yeah. to torso twist in. Like, yeah, all the weapons are... Some of them are on the arm, but a good amount of them are still on the side torsos. Like... At the I hip, though, I torso. Yeah. <laughs> okay, but I'll, you know, I'll give you this. I play the uh, Orion for tabletop. Okay. Oh yeah. yeah. Okay. So you bounce it back out. Yeah, right. I, I use it in Mega Mech. I want to get one of the uh, Catalyst Game Labs uh, Orion miniatures put in a oh. House Merrick Force. So I don't hate the Orion as a as a concept or the the visual of just it. Mech or online. It just doesn't play well. <laughs> Some things right, don't travel enough, translate from tabletop to the video games very well. No, that's fair. I mean, I we're we're allowed to have different opinions, and I I still think you're the most beautiful creature besides my wife to ever exist. So don't worry, Thorax. You still are golden in my book. Wow, that is some flattery right there. I know. Why do you think I'm married? <laughs> I'm a sweetheart. Uh, so yeah, we're going into the final match. Uh. Technically, 2D20 News did win the match. Yep. So, because that's how it works, everybody. So, again, if you win three out of the five, you know, that is math. That means you won. But uh, you want to play every drop. Every drop is super important because every drop is what actually you get your rewards based off. Besides, like, division placement. Um, so, Vega Parts needs will still want and be encouraged to win this last drop. Oh, yeah. Which is good. It's exciting. They're not. They're not playing for the uh, the match win, um, or you know the ranking position. That that's that ship has sailed. But they're playing for the MC, and uh, and they got a chance here to uh, not exactly take home the bacon, but take home some MC. So, I mean, they're pirates, so maybe they won't take home bacon, but they're gonna take something home. And it uh, probably wasn't theirs to begin with. Waiting for the players to do their things. Yeah, Plato trying to lock for both teams. A little impatient. Can we get a disqualif disqualification for unsportsmanship like content? Uh, you know, I think that I don't that know. might be grounds. I'll ban him. I'll do it right now. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not a referee. I don't see nothing. No, it's fine. Stream might see it, but I don't. All right, there we go. There we go. Right. Sometimes I, I will admit it is a little awkward to be a caster, and when you see people bring in extra hero max or more than the a lot of max and you want to say something but you're like i'm not supposed to that's very awkward because of course you say it while you're casting so it's like oh that's a fourth x mech uh, i don't know if that's okay but i can't say anything i'll let them decide on their own a little, a little awkward. yeah you know sometimes the teams are just good friends they'll figure it out on their own right I mean, I uh, I think 2D20 has done redrops. Like we we've had it to where, hey, you brought the wrong amount of max. You want to redrop this? Now, like, yeah, I mean, info has been given and stuff like that. But both teams have that info. You know, I I feel like there's arguments. You called it, by the way. Did I? I'm a genius. Yeah, you called the ballers. Look at you. I like that Flip they near. brought something similar to what we did earlier, but it's at least different enough that I think it's respectable. Uh, I'll go over uh, Baker Parts. We have a Phoenix Hawk with the five small lasers, two sub nose PPCs. Another uh, Phoenix Hawk. Wait, what happened? 
Uh, apparently there's a mech violation. Um, not For sure him. what it is. Oh, it might be the Cyrus. Kappa is under enemy control. Oh, did they already bring... There were a oh, lot of they... Osiruses. I can't remember exactly how many because they didn't take them all in a single drop, I don't think, but... Yeah, I'm not 100% sure either. Uh, anyways, yeah, two Phoenix Hogs, five Stamals, two sub PPCs, little uh, pop target build that has, like, some close-range capabilities. Marauder 4A bringing eight ER-large lasers. Oh, baby. Marauder 4L with two ER-PPC, two uh, Gauss Rifle, and Ray Razor with the other two ER-PPC, two Gauss Rifle. And then a job in 11F. Just a little comment here. The teams, they've elected to play it out. Um, they may elect to do a redrop after this, they might not. It's up to the teams to agree if they want to do a redrop and uh, count that result or if they want to just, you know. Frequently, a uh, mech violation would mean a, a forfeited drop. We'll see what happens here. I'm going to comment on the Cyclops build. Um, yes, please LBX do. LBX 5 and 4 medium X-Pulse lasers. I, I'm not up to speed on the current meta, but LBX 5s were a terrible weapon for me many years. <laughs> And Lipnir feels undergunned, but maybe the medium pulses pull it back. I don't know. I'd say it's, I've ran that build a lot. I You can know it's one of the mechs that I've run because it has the power drill. That's a known 2D20 leader kind of thing to put the power drill on the bolt on. Uh, and the, the mech, it's it's a mech that you also don't think should do well. Typically, it was a 4LB10 build. But for some reason, the 4LB5s with the medium X pulse, just for where they're situated, it does good work and if you don't have a person who wants to run a mauler or if you want to add a, another quote unquote mauler yeah the dps is there it's a little weird i will admit but it's there i i, I do like the slip near i've played lots of slip near um but i Same. i ran tens and fives on mine i don't know if i ever ran i think i did run pure uac five a little bit i didn't like that didn't have the guns for I was a 4LB10 fan. Just get me oh, yeah. close range, mid range, and let me slap people. The slap near. Oh, but yeah, the 4LB5 uh, for medium explosives won me a couple of matches uh, in comp this season. So it's uh, I don't know. Okay. Maybe it's just because it's a weird mech, weird build. Uh, we should commentate what's going on though. <laughs> uh, the dog and mechs are in. Uh, the interesting thing is that the Marauder for Ls are running Goss ER PPC, so they have them pinpoint. So if they can hit the shots and hit them well. It, it's very satisfying, but as far as sustained fire, these dog MX are shredding through everything. I think it's actually going to come down to the wolf pack that's going to be the wind compass. There's a lot of dedication for that dock line while only having a hell spawn and a Cyrus against two Phoenix Hawks and a Javelin. So maybe bad engages could uh, make a tip back yeah. towards the nuisance value way, but right now it does seem like nuisance value has a little bit of an edge. There's been some overpeaks here. Um, Push kind of got the damage it needed. It's into range. Ray Razor is open on their side torso. I believe that's their gun side torso. So they'd be down a single Goss if they lose that. Man, if Nusa's Value does my... Well, not the same drop, but a very similar drop to me and does it right, I'm going to be so upset. Seems like they're doing it, though. Like, the Maulers are in. Damage is going damage out. Damage is getting high, though. Uh, Ray Razor just lost their side torso. That is down to single Goss. The other Maulers are looking pretty good, though. You see and, the crossfire coming in Lusanka? Like, it's really yeah. tanking away at Corsair. Corsair wants to finish the kill, but has one AC2. Phoenix Hawks are in, and the Squirrel action from the back actually harassing a little bit of Lusanka now. It's helping out, but, like, both teams' wolf packs are engaged. Kamasi does get the kill on the Phoenix Hawk, which is probably needed to happen. Plato still alive in that Cyclops, just harassing the enemy wolf pack right now. Phoenix Hawk really low. Fibblewitz does get the kill. Lucianka actually jumping up there in the Osiris 4D. Again, those jump jets coming in clutch. Falkenheim still alive, but as I said their name, they go down. And Phoenix Hawk behind the tree uh, does get shredded. It's just a Marauder for L and a Javelin trying to stay alive to get value. So oh, it's up, up to the Javelin now to try and do the carry. Um, possible. Possible, maybe. I, I, I mean, the Cyrus 4D is a problem. Yeah. Oh, the Javelin's open both legs. There's no chance. Oh, okay. Yeah, the Osiris being there, I think, puts it, in my mind, to miss its value. I, I mean, yeah. the Osiris open both logical. legs, so if the if the Javelin was fresh, you pick a leg off the Osiris, you kite away, start using the Take caps, maybe, 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 but um, it would have been a hard task. Oh, what you saying? And if, so... if both legs were healthy, there was a chance, but yeah. We're seeing a offer for a redrop, 
but from Plato, so nuisance value to bacon pirates. So maybe bacon pirates brought something extra. I don't think so. It just seems like a weird thing to offer off if you. Yeah, I'm gonna flip up the stats here, and then uh, we'll see if the players. Uh, yeah, I guess so. What they're doing. Uh, Indigo Brown with Civ doing some. 12 damage in that mauler, really good damage, and then, yeah, good damage all around for Bacon Pirates, like, they got their value of a 563 in the Falcon Hines Marauder for L, one of the last Marauders to stay out to, uh, get killed, so, good value. Yeah, someone's chat, tell us what happened. <laughs> what was the deets? Someone was paying attention better than us, I swear. I wasn't tracking mechs. I suspect it's an overuse on the Osiris because it, there isn't two hero mechs here and they called it instant. So, also they used a molar earlier, but I don't think they did. Were they over tonnage? I don't... I don't yeah, think... I have no idea. So, who won that match then? Was it Nuisance Value or... Was it Baker Parts then? I guess. I mean, it's not us to make the decision, I suppose. So uh, I'll put an asterisk next to. Yeah. <laughs> I'm I'm adding up the tonnage here in my head real quick. We've got three molars at ninety each, so that adds up to two seventy. The Osiris Cyclops. is another thirty. They're up to three hundred. Cyclops three ninety. Hellspawn would put them to four thirty five. Oh. And it was a four twenty five drop limit, so they're ten tons over. So two D twenty will have a forfeit on that one. Oh snap. Um, and so, yeah, uh, Bacon Pirates, I mean, it's it's the rules. Not wanting to take the redrop seems pretty fair. You know, yep. it gets late. This is the last match of the ISC tournament. People are ready to be done. So. It's a ton of <laughs> So no redrop? Limit. Okay, GG's. <laughs> so I'm giving that win to the Bacon Pirates then off of yeah. a forfeit. Um, and it, it'd be a hard argument to make that X, 10 extra tons didn't make a difference, kind of, you know. Well, yeah, I mean, to, they, I, I feel like that. Because what somewhere. would that have been? That, that health bomb would have been maybe a fire starter, and they would have yeah. been down an SRM bomber. Yeah, that would probably be the easiest change. And that, I mean, I feel like that's pretty sizable. Yeah, a bomber, especially with the JJ capabilities of that mech. Not, not to take anything away from nuisance value, right? They, they still played a, a good drop there. They won pretty decisively. I don't, I don't think that even taking away ten tons from them, they wouldn't be able to do it. But at the same time, you can't really make an argument. Oh well, it doesn't matter because you know. Because it does matter. So, I mean, it, rules got to be yeah. in this game for a reason. Yeah, yeah absolutely. Um, uh, I mean, it was a good drop. Uh, the decks were fun. The teams were fine. Like I was really excited to see a lot of those mechs, and I was excited to see good old two D twenty two teams for the first time ever, at least in a in a in a real capacity. Where uh, and it seems like both teams did fairly well in their division placement. So uh, I'm glad, and I appreciate all the admins, and I appreciate you, Thurex, for casting a lot of those games and helping the other casters get on board. I mean, you helped a lot of the newer casters get their settings all figured out. And, of course, thanks for good old Yuntel being able to, you know, letting me join you. Yeah, uh, no, I, I enjoy it. Great. I, you know, finally got to do a cast with uh, the guy who's, you know, used to do all the cast back when I was uh, a player. Um, <laughs> and I will admit, uh, you caught me on a low energy day to cast a match and into this one. Uh, I, I'm definitely a little more tired, so we'll have to do this again. Maybe even a fresh first cast. Does that sound fair? Does that sound good? Yeah, um, yeah, maybe in the future. You know, uh, you, you announced your retirement earlier. I think from playing. It, it's uh, so yeah. It's not necessarily a retirement. Retirement. It's a hey, I got a baby on the way. Priorities are going to shift. You yeah. know, it's my it's my first kid after trying for three years, and I'm super excited about it. But you know, I don't know if you know this, but babies cost money, and I love streaming and I love putting out content for a lot of people. But I'm gonna have to probably work a little bit harder to make sure things are squared away. Uh, but for anybody who is concerned or worried or like that, uh, the plan is for me to try to continue streaming, and for is the plan for me to try to continue casting. It's just competitive gaming might be a little bit tougher for me to do. But I, I do have a baby carrier that I can wear, so we might just can be joined by myself and uh, the baby <laughs> yeah, <laughs> from so the occasional stream. Yeah, a little, little You'll still try to be around, just won't be able to lead a team almost certainly, but maybe the That's, occasional cast and maybe as a player. I, 
I was going to say occasional cast and yeah, more than likely a player. Uh, my whole dream and goal was to get a competitive team into competitive gaming uh, for MechWar Online. And I've definitely established that and to build a community to where it can self-populate and self-manage itself. And I believe this was a first rendition of how that would look and how that would feel. And uh, easy shout out to a lot of my teammates, a lot of my management team. I know a management team uh, to who have helped me out trying to organize and get this going because this was a huge success. And I think they're got a really good momentum building going into Battle of Midway, which is the very next uh, tournament. And while maybe I'll play, maybe I'll cast, but I'll definitely be cheering on 2D20. Um, and I hope uh, some of you do the same. Yeah. Yeah. So uh, thanks, Young Tao, for joining us. Uh, thanks, viewers, for watching NWO Comp and Aces Wild for organizing and hosting this tournament. And uh, that's it for me, right? I think we're wrapped up. Yeah. I mean, we're pretty much done. All right. All right. You ready? You want to count it down? Yeah, let's, let's do it. Three, two, one. Click. <laughs>